If you've been car shopping at a dealership, you're probably aware that there are charges aside from the vehicle price and applicable taxes. These costs often include title fees, pre-delivery inspection fees, and destination fees. But you may not have heard about a dock fee until you're sitting with a salesperson actively hammering out a deal. So you may be wondering what this mysterious dock fee is all about. Is it a scam? Do you have to pay for it? Well, no, and yes, but it depends. All will become clear by the end of this video, so let's get right to it. Like anything else, it would be wonderful if the answer to this question was straightforward, but instead the doc fee can feel vague and misleading. First off, doc is short for documentation or document, which should help eliminate what the fee is all about. Documentation fees are charged by dealerships to complete the paperwork necessary for the sale and file it to the proper channels. While it seems like a simple process, there are several contracts and forms that the dealership has to fill out. That includes a financing agreement that needs to be filed with the lender, title documentation to be submitted to the DMV, extended warranty forms filed with providers, and taxes paid to the state. For new cars, the vehicle also needs to be RDR'd, meaning having a retail delivery report processed to assign the car to an owner and initiate the vehicle warranty. That's more work than one salesperson can realistically perform. Dock fees are supposed to help pay salaries for people who work at the dealership that you probably never see, including the comptroller, accounting staff, administrative assistants, and management. So keep in mind that unlike the other fees, the dock fee goes straight into the dealership coffers. It's a flat rate fee and there's no breakdown provided regarding how that fee is dispersed. So it's possible that some of it ends up going straight to profit. Here's where things get tricky. You see, the amount of a dealer dock fee isn't flat or price regulated across the country. From one dealership to the next and from state to state, dock fees can vary by hundreds of dollars. In some states, the dealer dock fee has a capped amount. However, dealerships can still choose a lower fee or forego it altogether. In the remaining states, there are no limits on how much they can charge. When there isn't a cap, it's up to the dealer to set the dock fee amount which could range from nothing at all to $1,000. Some unprincipled dealers in these no-limit states can use the dock fee to pad their bottom line and scam a less savvy buyer. Each state has the ability to legislate their own documentation fees or dealer fees, and they're subject to change. Since most car buyers are annoyed by the added fees, don't be surprised to see more states implement maximum dock fee limits in the future. From dealership to dealership, the dock fee has the potential to be different even in states where a limit has been imposed. Skipping the fee may be possible if you search for the right dealer. If you aren't locked into one dealership, say there are four Chevy dealerships within a relatively close drive, it could help to call each one ahead of your visit to find out their dock fee and how rigidly it's applied. Alternatively, rather than stressing yourself out trying to negotiate the dock fee, it's better to focus on overall selling price. You may have a better success getting the dealer to drop the sale price to compensate for the added cost rather than fighting to scrap the dog feet. So don't be afraid to haggle. In the auto industry, you can't escape fees. Some are direct from the manufacturer, while others are legitimate charges from the dealership. But not all fees are on the up and up. They could be a way for the dealership to collect easy money through mandatory services, driving up the price of your purchase. So how can you tell the difference between what's legit and what's a scam? The following guide might help. These fees are what you can expect to find on the typical dealership invoice, and they're legitimate. You can't get away from paying these fees. Going by names that include destination fee, destination charge, freight charge, or freight delivery charge, it's the cost of getting vehicles from the port to the dealership. Destination fees are included on the dealer invoice from the manufacturer, can be seen on the window sticker, and the cost is passed along to you, the customer. Destination fees vary between car makers, but are typically between $900 and $1,200. When you buy a car from a dealer, they usually take care of filing the paperwork with the DMV on your behalf. But it ain't free. Each state is a little different and the charges are according to the prescribed state amounts. Expect anywhere from 50 to up to a few hundred for title, and the licensing fee is predetermined by the state DMV. Registering your car is a separate process from licensing in several states. The registration fee is collected by the dealership rather than making you wait in line at the DMV. 
It can range from nothing to a few hundred dollars, depending on the location and the make and model. On car sales at a dealership, the sales tax is collected on the invoice and submitted to the state on your behalf. This will be an amount calculated according to the state's tax rates. Some car makers tack a fee onto their vehicles to offset the cost of advertising and promotion. While it might seem a little sus, as the kids say these days, it's nonetheless incorporated into vehicle pricing with big manufacturers like Nissan and Toyota. It can be anywhere from $250 to more than $2,000, quite a range. Now for the million dollar question, which fees that dealers are trying to pass off as legit are actually a load of horse hooting? If you're faced with any of these fees, question the dealer prior to signing anything and negotiate them away. Otherwise, find a dealership that doesn't charge them. Got your pen handy? Here's a list. Before you take delivery of your car, most dealers will detail it and possibly fill the tank with fuel. Well, that's a nice thing to do. A select few might try to charge you extra for it under the guise of a dealer prep fee. Essentially, it's a fee for giving the car a courtesy wash and gassing it up. Things you should get at no charge. Literally, an ADM fee is telling you right in the name that you're getting ripped off. It's an acronym for additional dealer markup which means it's being sold for more than the sticker price or retail price. If that sounds suspect, it's because it's a big no-no. In principle, VIN etch is a good idea. Basically, each body panel is marked with the serial number in the event the vehicle is stolen and disassembled for parts, and you're sold an insurance to pay you a lump sum if that happens. However, virtually no one ever tries to collect on a VIN etch. It ends up being a scheme that pays the dealership money with almost no chance of any benefit to you. So just say no to VinEdge. Dealers are charged a fee for vehicles in their inventory on a monthly basis. It's a cost of doing business. Some dealerships like to collect that interest back from unassuming customers as a fee on their invoice. But it isn't the customer's fault that the dealer hasn't moved their inventory quicker. If you see a floor plan fee, it should be scrubbed from the sales agreement before you assign. As we talked about previously, a destination fee is paid as indicated on the window sticker, and that's fair. However, a dealership may try to double dip on the delivery or destination charge on the invoice. It can be easy to confuse the customer since the legit destination charge is sometimes wrapped up in the total selling price, not listed in the fees that are separated out. You need to keep a close eye on the pricing to catch additional delivery charges. Car dealers are in the business to make money. But if you think they're taking advantage and charging more than is fair, you do have options. If you're being charged more for a dealer dock fee than the state's capped amount, the first thing to do is to confront the dealership. If they don't adjust their pricing mistake, you are well within your rights to contact a local dealer association. They'll address the concern. Other fees aren't illegal per se, but they aren't ethical practices either. You may not have any legal recourse if they won't reverse their fees or offset them with a discount, but you can make your displeasure known. Customers are free to leave reviews on Google, Yelp, and their dealer website to let others know what to expect when buying a car from a shady dealership. A firm public airing of grievances, so to speak, may help straighten out some of these practices, or at least help the next guy avoid the same pitfall. Have your own story about suspect fees when buying a car? Or do you have a question about a fee that we didn't address in the video? Drop a note in the comments section. And don't forget to show our video a little love by giving us the old thumbs up and subscribing to our channel for more automotive content. Until next time.